Nowadays, televisions and screens in general are everywhere. It is all taken for granted, although the technology behind it is quite complex. But the first television ever, called the televisor, was completely different. While modern screens rely on electronics to create an image, the first television was mostly mechanical. Before we get into the design and principles, let's see what makes it possible to create moving pictures. It all comes down to the ability of the eye to capture an image for a split second. As the light from an image falls on the eye, it is projected on the back. When the light source disappears, the image stays on the back of the eye for a small time. This is called the persistence of vision. When images change at a quick rate, the eye can't distinguish the separate images and blends them. This creates the illusion of movement. A good example is a tomatrope. When the disc spins fast enough, the bird appears to be in the cage. The image of the cage is still on the eye when the image of the bird is projected. This is the basic principle of all screens. Another fine example is the running horse. When the pictures are played fast enough, we can see a running horse instead of the separate pictures. So now we know that if something is changed quick enough, the eye will blend the images together. This also works if you divide an image into pieces and alternate them one after another. This is basically what the televisor does. Let's take a look in detail. The most important part of the televisor is the disc. It's called the NIPCO disc. In this example the disc will have 8 holes. In real televisors this was generally around 32, but it could also be higher. The holes are placed in a spiral design. If we spin the disc counterclockwise, the holes will move in the spiral. When a viewing window is placed in front of the disc, we can see the holes scanning the window from the bottom to the top and from the right to the left. The image is being split up in 8 lines. One rotation of the disc means one image. If we place a light behind the disc and vary the light strength, we can vary the brightness as it passes through the holes. Thanks to the persistence of vision, this will all appear at once and look like a complete image. Here is an example. I've also divided the image into 8 lines. Each letter represents one analog signal for each line. Each signal changes in time. With each line having its own signal, we've got 8 separate signals. Let's take a look at one line in detail. This is line C. The brightness in this simple example changes in time between light and dark. The light source is simply being switched on and off. If the hole in the disc moves upwards, the light is being switched on and off. This will result in dark and light spots in this line. Thanks to the persistence of vision, this will appear as a dotted line. If all the signals are being sent to the light source in a row, it will light up the holes in the disc while it's moving in the corresponding line. This will appear as our image. In real televisors, the brightness won't be either white or black, so the light source will be varied in strength instead of being switched on and off. In a realistic example, the brightness can be anything between 0 and 100%. In cameras, the light source is replaced by a light sensitive element. The viewing window is replaced by a lens to focus the image. The image is then scanned and divided into lines. If this signal is sent to a televisor, spinning at the same speed, the image will appear. Typically the disc spins around 12.5 times per second, resulting in a moving image which was considered smooth enough for that time. Of course, nowadays the frame rate is minimum the double of that. As you can see, it really wasn't that complicated back then. Of course, some additional features like image stabilization and synchronization were added later. But this is the basic working principle. I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to leave questions and comments below. Thanks for watching.